Hello, I'm putting together this video today to discuss e-collars, what they are, what they're used for, how they're used, and there's a misconception of what an e-collar actually is. Uh, so what I want to compare it to here is I have a TENS machine. So these things are used for sore muscles, uh, muscles that are in spasm to get them to loosen up, and it just sends an electrical pulse. If you go to a chiropractor or a physical therapist, they're probably using a TENS machine of, of some fashion. But this is the same, same sensation that the dog feels is what you feel from a TENS. So I want to explain what an e-collar actually does and, and why it's used. So I've got two charts here, uh, a chart of the dog arousal and an e-collar level. So when I talk about an e-collar level, this particular e-collar goes from 0 to up to 100. So I'm using this as the example. So this e-collar level, the lowest stimulation, the highest stimulation. So when a dog is at sleeping, they have no arousal at all. They're, they're at a, a level zero. If you take a calm dog uh, with no distraction, they're going to be at about a level six. And what I mean by that is they might not be listening to you. They may not be paying any attention to you when you give a command. Um, if you can use an e-collar to at a level of a six, it, it's enough of a, um, a level that's equal to where they're at that the dog will all of a sudden realize that you're communicating with them, uh, you're giving them a come command and they, they'll come to you. But as the dog progresses in the arousal, uh, if a dog sees somebody walking in the distance and the dog becomes aroused by that and starts locking in on that, that person, it may take a 10, a level 10 on the e-collar to get the dog's attention. So you might be saying something to the dog and the dog may not be responding. Um, a dog sees a rabbit, it might be at a 12. So we have to hit at a level 12 when we're telling the dog to come for the dog to, to reply to that or to respond to that. The problem is people talk about using a uh, e-collar and using something like a tone or a vibrate function. Well, a tone and a vibrate is a static amount. So I, I'm just using this as an example. This isn't exact, but if you hit a tone or vibrate, it's, especially a vibrate, it may be at a level 10 in equivalent to the e-collar or to, to an elect the electronic stimulation. So if you're hitting a 10 and the dog is down, you know, somewhere around a six, even a vibrate might be a little bit on the high side for the dog, uh, depending on the dog, how soft the dog is. But the problem is, is that that vibrate and tone is always at that same level. No matter where the dog's at, you're always going to be at a level 10. So if you take a dog that is, uh, sees a rabbit, right when the dog locks in and it's a level 12, but you've got about a split second before the dog goes from level 12 up to about a 65 once the dog starts chasing. So if you're hitting the vibrate tone and the dog is at this level, the dog's not gonna respond to it. You can give commands, you can yell all you want because it's somewhere down here. This dog is so focused on this rabbit, you have to have something that uh, is gonna be at that level. So you have to ramp up your, your e-collar. You, you dial it up to a level where the dog is going to respond to that, where it's going to supersede the um, the drive the dog has of going after that rabbit. Now, of course, if I were, if my dog was down here, calm, and I hit it with a 65, that dog is going to yelp. It's it, that's a really strong stimulation, but depending where the dog is, it's not. Um, I, I'm using this example because this is what I found with my dog when it decided to chase a rabbit. Uh, it took me up to a 65. He didn't yelp. He didn't do anything. It, at that moment, he realized I was calling for him, and he just turned around and came back. One of the things with, with using these e-collars is you're, a lot of times you're chasing the dog. As the dog is elevating, running through, the dog starts here going from 12 to 65, it's a matter of you're probably about a second and a half between your, the dog seeing the rabbit and the dog deciding to chase the rabbit. So if the dog is here and he's starting to amp up and I hit him with a 12, I'm behind. So now I'm chasing him. I'm dialing it up 20. 25, 30, trying to catch up. Uh, what we want to do is we actually want to cap it. We want to get ahead of this. So we don't want to be um, dialing up real slow. We want to dial up pretty quick. Because what I want to do is if I'm here, 
I'd rather not the dog. I'd rather the dog not get to here. I'd rather to catch the dog at maybe at about a 20, 25. So when I see that dog locking in, I'm not going to hit the dog with a 25 because I know he's going up the chart. I'm going to probably hit him with about a 25, and then I'm going to start dialing up from there. Uh, and if I can get ahead of it, if he's not to 25 yet, and I hit him with a 25, I've stopped the dog from chasing. So that's my objective, is to try to get ahead of it rather than chasing. Let's cap it, let's get ahead of it, and stop that, that behavior. Now, this is something that is part of training. It's um, after time, your dog starts to understand the importance of, if you have a good solid of obedience, the dog starts to um, respond to this better than always having to use the e-collar. And I use this example because I used this just uh, several months ago on my own dog. And then a few weeks ago, my dog decided to chase a squirrel and, I, and he didn't have his e-collar on and I was able to call him off. So he learns that it's important to, to come when I tell him to come. So there's different levels of where the dogs are going to be. Um, if you got a dog that's got a high drive, um, seeing a prey animal, uh, a small animal, it's going to ramp up pretty quick. Um, depending on your dog, if a dog sees somebody walking, it might be at a level 10, sees somebody walking a dog. If your dog is kind of a little bit dog aggressive, um, it might ramp up to, to here. But again, what we want to do is we want to try to get ahead of that as, as you see the dog ramping up. And the more you work with this with your dog, the more you understand where you need to be and how you need to, to use that. So one of the things I want to show a, a demonstration of is I've got two different... So here's the controllers. Um, this one here is uh, an easy educator. Uh, this is made by eCollar Technologies. And this is a Garmin. Uh, but one thing I want to show on this is uh, this is the first one. This isn't the first one I've ever had. This is the second one I've ever had of an e-collar. Um, but this one has a level between one, if I dial up on this thing, it's one through 18. All right, so this one has a level of one through 100. So why does that matter? Well, let's just assume that a level one and a level one are the same on here. Uh, this one, and, and then level 18 is equivalent to level 100 on here. That means that for every one I am going up on here, I'm probably going up probably six. So if I'm running a, a level three on here, I might be very equivalent to running a 18 on here. This is a much more granular. I can, I can really dial into whatever that dog is so I'm not hitting too hard or hitting too soft with, uh, uh, with the stimulation. As far as these go, uh, this, is, this is what I recommend everybody get. Now, the controller is a little bit different than what, this controller is a little bit different than what, um, what I'm recommending people to get. It's still the same brand of remote, uh, of, they're both made by e-collar technology. This one's a little bit more expensive because it, it's made for four dogs. Um, but what I really like about this one, in comparison to this one, is if I gotta ramp up on this thing, it's dial, push, 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 push. I gotta keep dialing it up. And while I'm dialing it up, I have to press the button that creates the stimulation. So press, 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 press the stimulation button. And, and that, in fact, I can't ramp while I got the button, while I got the button pushed. So I have to go, release, hit it again. So it's a, if your dog is escalating, it's really hard to catch up to try to cap the behavior. This one, I can press and hold it, and while I'm pressing and holding, I can start just dialing with my thumb. I can start dialing this thing up, and I can dial it up pretty quick. I mean, one swipe like that, I'm up to a 45. So uh, this is a much quicker, uh, quicker way. Now, the other ones that, that um, I recommend people get, it's the, where the remote is a little bit different, there's a dial on the top, and it's a little bit harder to manipulate with a single hand as this one is. Um, but again, I, I paid more money for this particular unit. One of the misconceptions about e-collar training is that it's used as a way to train sit, to train stay, to, tra to train down, those types of things. But that's not how an e-collar is used. You, when it comes to actually training a new command, we don't use it in that fashion. What we'll do for, for training a new command is sit, for example. Sit would be have a leash on the dog, push down on the butt, pull up on the leash, and when the dog sits down, we hit the hit clicker, and then, we'll, and then we'll give the dog a treat. And we just keep doing that over and over and over. And then eventually, uh, the dog will understand it, but then the dog will kind of start to ignore it because they'll notice other things going on. That's where we implement the, the e-collar. 
And what we do with e-collar is there's a, what we call the working level and then there's the correction level. So working level is where the dog starts to actually notice it, kind of feels it a little bit. And so we figure out every dog is unique. Uh, my dogs have been usually right around six is where they start to notice it. So what we would do is as we, to train the dog is uh, with the e-collar is we use uh, the working level. And then what we would do is if the dog's not sitting, we, uh, we give the sit command, we press and hold the e-collar. So it's feeling something, but there's, it's such a low level. And then the dog with sits, we release the pressure. Um, so think of it as it's a leash pressure, but you just don't have a leash on them. Okay. And then over time, the dog doesn't really even need that. And eventually you kind of get past the e-collar as the dog gets better with its commands. Uh, you can eventually get to a point where the dog, you don't even really, for the dog, you don't really even need the e-collar anymore. It's pretty much just there just in case, um, you know, the dog hits something an arousal level that, that you need to do. But you want to have that dog trained on an e-collar and, and so they understand what it is and how it works and what it means. But in essence, what an e-collar is providing you is it's providing you the ability to apply leash pressure when you're not connected to the dog. 